Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Good morning and welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. The music for today will be provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir, directed by Trudy Schmaltz. Our guest speaker today is Reverend Robert Gable of Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Brookfield, Wisconsin. Your liturgist is Pastor Schmidt of St. John's Lutheran Church in Glendale, Wisconsin. The hymn numbers for today from the Lutheran hymnal are 200, 195, and 201. On the evening of that first Easter Sunday, two followers of Jesus were mired in their own misery until a stranger joins them and gives them a scolding they will never forget. It's all in Pastor Gable's message about three little words. Stay tuned as Reverend Gable focuses on that theme, three little words. Lord Jesus Christ, be present now, our hearts in true devotion bow, thy spirit send with grace divine, and let thy truth within us shine. Unseal our lips to sing thy praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. The Lutheran Radio Choir will sing hymn 200, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high. Glory be to the Father and to the Son.
The epistle is from the first chapter of 1 Peter. If you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of the imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. This is the word of the Lord. The gospel on which today's sermon is based is from the 24th chapter of St. Luke. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow to heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon." Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Here ends the reading. Let us confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
After the choir sings hymn 195, Christ Jesus Lay in Death Strong Spans, Pastor Gable will speak on the theme, Three Little Words. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It was Sunday evening, and two dejected followers of Jesus were making their own sad shuffle toward a small village named Emmaus. The gloom in the air was as palpable as the approaching darkness. And as these two walked and talked their way into the shadows, the gloom of the moment suddenly became the assessment of what their future might now hold. And it was anything but encouraging. Jesus was dead, and so were all of their hopes and dreams. Three little words summarized it all for them. Three little words that gave the summation of a week and a weekend full of disastrous events that they never thought they would have to come to grips with. The three little words hung in the air like an unwelcome and an unrelenting fog. Three painful words. We had hoped. We had hoped that he was the one. We had hoped that Jesus was the real deal, the one who was going to finally bring back the glory days of King David. We had hoped he would be the one who would expose the treachery of the Herods, and cast off the oppressive occupation of the Roman Empire in our lands. We had hoped that he would expose the fraudulent spiritual leadership of the Pharisees. And, 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 we had hoped well, just that things would have turned out differently than they did. Things? What things? The sudden sound of a new voice interrupted the solemn procession and their now very well-established pity party amongst themselves. What things? It jolted and jostled them back into the reality like a slap on the face. Things like, you haven't heard? It's only been the dominant item in the local news, well, maybe for the last week or so. Oh, a crying shame is what it was. Absolute injustice, that's what it was. Secret trials going on in the middle of the night. The bribes and the hush money were flowing this way and that. It was so obvious that the fix was in. The governor himself says, 
I find no evidence with which to convict this man. And then he immediately turns around and sends him off to the cross, washes his hands of the whole sordid mess. Don't blame me, he says. See to it yourselves. Oh, and then the second traveler had to chime in. Then our women. Oh, the women come up and they say they've been talking to angels. Angels, they said. Oh, well, sure, I believe in angels, but, but angels who tell you that Jesus is alive? I don't think so. You know you just don't come back from a crucifixion cross. He's dead, I tell you, and that's that. And we had hoped. God, we had hoped. What the two travelers never expected to hear were the next words that came out of the stranger's mouth. You fools. Come again? You slow of heart, stubborn fools. Don't you know the Psalms? Aren't you familiar with Isaiah? Of course you are. Well, they were good Jews, and of course this was standard education for them ever since their days at the beginning of synagogue school. They remembered the phrases as well. You will not let your Holy One see destruction. I know that my Redeemer lives. And after he has suffered, then he will see the light of life and will be satisfied. That's Isaiah 53. You know these scriptures, men. Don't you think that they mean what they say? And as for the evidence of the women and their story this morning, maybe they know something that you missed. Like three little words. He is risen. He is risen. Those three little words are still the crux of the matter today. And they aren't going away anytime soon. Either Jesus Christ was risen from the dead, or he has perpetrated one of the largest scams that has ever come across in recorded history. Christian martyrs across the centuries have all chosen to die instead of deny those three little words. And now, friend, what about you? The tools of history are in place, and it is generally accepted across the, the study of history that these events really did happen, even though they cannot be explained. And so the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead on the third day following his crucifixion is established fact. Secular historians report it, and every credible source says it had to have happened. And this incredible event of the empty tomb deserves a response, and it cannot be ignored or explained away. So again, dear friend, what about you? And what effect should the empty tomb and a risen Christ mean to you and have on your life? Well, it should mean incredible things, and all of them are good. Because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, your death will no longer be 
a dark, dead end, but rather the story of your life can continue. And eternal life with Jesus in heaven is now possible. In fact, it's not only possible, it is a certainty to all who have confessed the name of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior risen from the dead. All those who take his words come unto me seriously. Come unto the risen Christ and believe in your heart. Come to the risen Christ and acknowledge that yes, while you have committed many and grievous sins, sins upon which the full wrath of God should come upon you, but because of Jesus on the cross, the full wrath of God was poured out on him. And so come unto him, come unto Jesus and rely on the mercy of God and then bring your own confession of your sins. Acknowledge everything that Christ has done for you and come believing and come in faith and come with confidence that just as God raised Jesus from the dead, so he will raise you as well. And you can live with Jesus in his heavenly household. The three little words are still there. They have been transformed from we had hoped and now into he is risen. Jesus lives and so will you for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, your Son is victor over death and the grave. Strengthen us during this Easter season to believe and live from the good news that he is risen. Even as he has triumphed over death and the grave, so shall all who place their trust in him. All loving one, in your Son's ministry, you brought healing to many with diseased and damaged bodies. Bless, comfort, and sustain all who have requested our prayers. Grant that they may look to you in every need, draw comfort from your abiding word, and daily rejoice in the good news that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Joining with the eternal worship of the Lamb and ever cry, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
As we celebrate 89 years of broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ, we'd love to send you a special free gift from our ministry to your home. As always, you can receive a copy of today's sermon. All you need to do is simply write to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. You may also call our radio church office at 414-462-9900. We also invite you to follow us online, listen to archived messages, and more. Log on to lrcsonline.org. You've been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, pre-recorded at Trinity Lutheran Church in Freistadt, Wisconsin. Today's music was provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir, directed by Trudy Schmaltz. The message, Three Little Words, was given by the Reverend Robert Gable, and your liturgist has been Reverend Schmidt of St. John's Lutheran Church of Glendale, Wisconsin. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now close the service with the hymn 201, Jesus Lives, the Victory's Won. Preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. Prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. That's the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.